Welcome, everybody. Good evening. Thank you for your attendance of the August 24th City Council meeting, regular City Council meeting here in Capitola. May we please have a roll call? Councilmember Brooks? Here. Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. And Mayor Kaiser? Here. Vice Mayor Brown is out this evening. Would you all please join in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. We have a, oh, I'm sorry. Are there any additions or deletions this evening? Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. Thank you. We will move on to presentations. Tonight we're starting with the United Way grant report presentation. Hello, hello, good evening. Um, my name is Sarah Emmert. I'm the Director of Community Impact with United Way of Santa Cruz County. Um, do I just tell you next slide? Is that, next slide, please. So we are here to highlight the projects funded by the city's uh, grant program, specifically 211, the Community Assessment Project, also known as CAP, and then the Youth Action Network. I'm going to be co-presenting with our amazing uh, Youth Action Network intern, Milena Ranga, and Captain uh, Sarah Ryan. We've included more slides than we can cover in six minutes, uh, but we wanted to include some additional slides for your reference. Um, I will start us off and touch base very, very, very briefly on 211 and Community Assessment Project. So here's a slide that highlights Capitola calls from 211. There were 165 distinct Capitola resident calls in 2022 and almost 300 referrals. Next. Um, this slide includes the top reasons people call 211, and I'm sure no one is surprised that housing is one of the top reasons for calls. Next. And moving on, uh, let's do the next one. So moving on to the community assessment project, um, the last cap we did focused on the black community and specifically black issues um, in our community. We are currently gearing up for the next cap in 2024. Um, next, here's some more data, um, which you all can look at um, at a later date. And then I'm actually gonna turn it over to Milena and Captain Ryan to talk more about the Youth Action Network. I lower this. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Milena. I'm the Acting Youth Action Network Coordinator. Um, so you could go to the next slide. So you may be asking, what is Youth Action Network? So Youth Action Network is a collaborative space where youth and adults come together and co-design workshops and projects that surround and address issues that affect young people in the, in the county. Essentially, we are working to bridge the gaps of distance and experience with Santa Cruz County by forming a steering committee that allows different organizations and communities to be represented in these conversations. The Mid-County project we're focusing on right now is the Capitola City Youth Partnership, which I will let Sarah talk about. Hello, everybody. So we, the United Way reached out and we began to brainstorm on how to address the youth issues and unsafe behavior and just the lack of positive engagement with youth. And um, so we thought about different ways to reach out. We, we reached back to last year, we did the Capital Star program in the Capital Village and found that that was um, positive reinforcement starting with education and, and um, collaboration was, was the best way to begin. Yep, thank you. And um, so our approach to addressing it is to come together strength-based um, to try to create a youth uh, space that is positive. And we're looking at the Capitola Mall and reinventing and redesigning the space that we have there that the police department has used historically with our volunteers to create a space where youth can come in and engage with the public. 
Um, it's a collaborative space. We're still in the infant stages of designing it and working together on what that's going to look like. But I'm excited about where it where it could go and um, the fact that we have this collaboration together uh, to invite the youth in. Yeah, so United Way has actually taken the role in enga engaging youth. We're really trying to kind of practice what we preach um, in centering youth in the conversation. So we've been able to, creating converse, to create conversations surrounding how to make this space youth friendly. Um, we've taken the lead in facilitating this conversation by asking questions like, what kinds of activities young people want and what they want the space to look like and be named via listening and planning sessions. And it's actually really interesting you find that once you start to engage young people that we are so out of touch with a lot of things that they like. Um, like even myself being like in college, I still am like, whoa, I didn't, would never have thought of that. Um, but yeah, so we're actually having this Tuesday uh, an event that's gonna be to design the space, like an online interior designing session. So really just trying to find creative ways to engage young people and make it something that they're interested in. Um, and yeah, so our next steps include, like um, Officer Ryan said, establishing a star card where young people can be rewarded for positive behavior at the mall by security guards and mall tenants, kind of just to positively reinforce that, um, just smart behaviors and positive, positive actions at the mall. Um, and we're also gonna continue to work with youth um, and partner agencies in creating the fall series, which is kind of our big dreams for it. Like I said, it's kind of in the infant stages, but hopefully um, as it goes on, and then if you wanna go to the next step. Um, yeah, so currently we're working on recruiting for the Youth Action Network Steering Committee, which is that space where young people can come together and have conversations surrounding these issues that young people kind of get to choose are important. Um, and we also have some specific projects that we're working on. For example, the Capitola City Youth Partnership um, and Youth Participatory Action Research Project, which is smaller known as YPAR. It's like a collaborative um, with UC Santa Cruz, which allows us to kind of engage young people in research and um, help young people kind of inform the research themselves and kind of be the co-leaders um, in that research process. Next slide. Yeah, and then if you want to stay connected, you could always visit our website. We have a lot of really cool resources on there. Um, our Instagram has all of our events and all of the cool like activities to engage young people. Um, and our Facebook, we post both things on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and then you can also always email me. My email's listed on this slide, but like feel free to meet me after this meeting if you do want to meet. Um, and also Sarah's information is all up there. But yeah, thank you. Great, thank you for all the great work. I'm excited about the new space too. Sounds awesome. All right, and then we also have a staff introduction. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce Jennifer Davis as the new account clerk in the city's finance department. Um, Jennifer previously worked as an office manager and bookkeeper for about seven years before joining the city. Um, prior to that, she worked as a salvage claims assistant, document control specialist, and loan processor. Um, Jennifer started with us last week and has already been instrumental in getting the, um, the shares DIA annual assessment invoices out. Um, we're extremely excited to have Jennifer join our team as now we're fully staffed for the first time in a little over three years. So please join me in welcoming Jennifer to Capitola. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Yeah, we're excited to have you. Excited to <laughs> thank you. Very excited to be here and grateful for this opportunity. So Great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. And do we have a report on closed session? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening. We had a closed session on item one on the agenda, conference with labor negotiations, and no reportable action was taken. Thank you. Great, thank you. And are there any additional materials? There was additional materials for item 9A. The administrative policy was updated, and the attachment was included with the agenda packet online and provided to prior to the meeting. And for those wondering, the presentations, including the one from United Way, are also available online for those who would like to view it after the meeting. Great, thank you. All right, we will jump down to oral communications by members of the public. Um, you will be given 
three minutes, and this is on anything that is not on tonight's general government agenda. Madam Mayor, um, honorable members of the council, um, we're all heartbroken what happened in Lahaina. And I'd like to go over a few things to bring us aware of where this little village we have here and on the many similarities to Lahaina that we have right here. It starts with, surprisingly, the population is 12,000 people, Lahaina. That's the population of Capitola, basically. It's two square miles. Capitola is two square miles. Basically, we have basically the same infrastructure they have there. They, they, we would have the same problem with, with infrastructure as far as electrical if anything happened. And supposedly that's what caused the fire along with high winds. We, we, we have never experienced the winds that Lahaina experienced, although, although it, it, it can't say it, doesn't, it wouldn't happen. There's this, there's this thing called the San Anas. I don't know if everybody is aware of that, that we used to get in springtime all the time, and they would be high winds. We're very vulnerable right here. And it goes deeper than that because Lahaina was built in the 1920s and 30s. And what they are, are just all wood houses and they're all built back to back. There's no separation or fire separation on that on, in Lahaina. Bingo, that's the village right here. We, the, only, the, only, the only buildings that we have in, in Capitola that have fire suppression were ones that were built in the last, let's say 15 years that have fire suppression systems. And other than that, we're, we're, as, we're as vulnerable as they are. We don't have scape routes. Uh, what happened there was is that um, it's a combination of errors, really, in that they had an alarm system, and they decided not to set it off. And all their cell towers burnt. They, they, their communication was going to be by cell phone, which is our system. We used to have an alarm system on top of the fire department. It was here for years. Fifteen years ago, the city um, and uh, our, our safety crews decided to abandon that system. If it happened at night, many people turn their phone off. In their case, in their case, not having that sound system costs us at least 115 people's lives as well as the county is gone. We're not, we're not any different than what happened in Lahaina. We have to wake up here. This is global warming has just begun. And so th this type of safety system should be our priority in the city and, and finding ways that we feel safer as a community and it's particularly to alarm our, re our residences. Um, we, we can't start too soon. And certainly a starting point would be to get a, an overhead alarm system in the same because you would hear it. And they can, they can set it up where one beep means this, two beep means that, three beep means, means this. We also have a, a, a tsunami you, situation. Other speakers, sorry if you yeah. could step I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish my thing because I guess it's extremely important. I'm, I'm almost I, I agree with you, but that is your three minutes. Thank you so much. Okay, I, I, I really hope that the city takes this seriously because it's a very serious issue. And uh, let's don't have another Lahaina in our, in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Goran Klapic. I live here locally in Santa Cruz County. Today at 10, uh, 20 a.m., I made an emergency call to the Capitola PD uh, office because somebody was uh, illegally drinking alcohol on the premises of CVS on 41st Avenue. Uh, he was consuming uh, a bottle of alcohol, uh, which was a beer, uh, across of McDonald's. I want to remind the authorities here in the county, you cannot drink alcohol in public. That's the federal law. I was a security guard one time here in Capitola. I know a little bit about such things, what can happen when it gets out of hand. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you all. Have a great evening. Thank you. Mayor, council, and staff, uh, my name is Lori Hill. I proudly serve this community as one of your art and cultural commissioners. And uh, I just wanted to bring to your attention, if it hasn't already, the Ukrainian Art in the Park event tomorrow, uh, excuse me, on Saturday. It runs from noon until six. And 
I have been in communication with many people whose heritage goes back to Ukraine. Many of them are refugees, and they are bringing their art, their spark, their dance, their music to our Esplanade Park this Saturday. So I encourage you, if you're available, to swing by, and uh, thank you so much for your support for this event. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mary Beth Kahalen, and I am president of the Capitola Beach Festival. And I can say we have eight barges and we have eight floats this year. I am so excited. So we are also adding new things to our event. We're going to have a paddleboard race, which we are very excited. Sutter has stepped up to be our main sponsor, which has just saved us. And um, the race is going to happen, and we have a lot of new stuff going on. So come and join us and volunteer, because we're always looking for those. Thank you. Thank you. Any in-house members of the public wish to speak? I'm seeing none here. Is there anybody online? There are no hands raised, Mayor. Great. Thank you. I will take it back to any staff comments. Like Nikki. I think we've got one update from staff. Great. Good evening, Mayor, Council members. Um, so I wanted to let Council know about the recent public art installation that occurred in the lower parking lot here behind City Hall. We had a um, an old cypress tree stump that, through the public art program has now been turned into a lovely work of art. Um, we will be distributing images on social media and amongst the council, but I wanted to let the public know, please come check out this new piece of artwork. We will be adding some signage and maybe some rough landscaping to help protect the piece. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anything else from staff? No. All right. Any council comments? Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, give a huge shout out to Parks and Rec for an outstanding summer program. Um, as we wrap up the summer and students are now back in school, all I heard was great things about the summer program and junior guards and Nikki, we really could not um, do any of this without you and your outstanding team. Um, so, and this is also just a reminder to the public that school is back in session. Another great, huge shout out to our police department. We had an unfortunate event that occurred on the first day of school and they, um, it was just luck that that day they had 10 extra staff on um, and were able to support the school so quickly. Um, so thanks to you and thanks for continuing to park outside the schools and manage traffic and um, citate, citate, give citations to those that are breaking all the rules. So thank you to both departments. Great job. I'd like to thank all our great volunteers and all the people here. There's some really great things that happened this summer and a lot of great things happening. It's just awesome to be a part of and we couldn't do it without everybody here. So thank you. Yeah, it's been a busy summer. <laughs> I mean, and congrats to everybody for showing up and being a part of what you are able to be a part of. So um, I would like to echo what you guys said. And we continue now that school is in session. Hopefully <laughs> no more incidents will occur. That was scary. All right, um, we will move down to consent. The consent items will be enacted in one motion listed below unless any council member wishes to pull a specific item. I'll move items 8A through G. I'll second that. Great, we have a motion and a second. Maybe we have a roll call, please. Just to clarify, so you're You've moved items 8A through G. No, I. Oh, I. Okay. That's oh, what I yeah. really meant. We have to turn page the page two. Yeah. Page two. <laughs> Just <laughs> checking. Okay. Thank you. So I... the motion is to adopt the consent calendar. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the whole thing. Perfect. Entire consent. Thank you. And I'm so sorry. I just wanted to catch who was the second. 
Okay, yes. perfect. So the roll call vote. Councilmember Brooks? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Uh, Councilmember Peterson? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. Thank you. All right. So we'll go on to general government tonight. Night I'm Item, item 9A, it's the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project Fundraising Partnership. Here to present on that is Director Khan. The action tonight is to adopt a resolution outlining expectations and understanding between the city and the community-led fundraising campaign for the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project and approve a donor recognition policy for these enhancements. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I am here again to talk about the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project, or CWEP. Next slide, please. So as you all may know, we have the Wharf Resiliency and Public Access Project. We are starting construction on that at the end of next month. Um, that is a project to expand the wharf and increase its resiliency, do some really extensive maintenance, storm damage repair, and some public improvements. Um, with that, a group of very uh, faithful volunteers have put together the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project team, which is an independent project from our resiliency project to be funded by private donations to provide new and upgraded amenities to the wharf to hopefully be completed in tandem with our resiliency project. Next slide, please. Um, so last council meeting, we brought the tentative plan for you all to review. And since then, I've refined the project, so both with the CWEP group and then with the council input, and also in consideration of the projected fundraising from the group, which is approximately $250,000. Uh, the final scope has been divided into three separate sections, those that are CWIP funded, those to be funded by others, and then items that are currently unfunded. Next slide, please. So under the final scope, under the CWIP funded priorities, uh, include artistic features, including a donor feature, which is an example on the left, and then an improved entry gate, which was uh, given to you as a rendering at the last meeting. Um, also, mosaic art, which would continue throughout the length of the war, is kind of reflective of that art on the entry gate. Uh, next slide, please. Also, CBUT funded would be educational features such as site, including sightseeing binoculars and historical signage of the wharf. Next slide. Uh, visitor amenities, including a fish cleaning station, also an example. Um, enhanced lighting structure, water filling station with a foot wash connected to that unit. Next slide. And then upgrading existing amenities that we have uh, to new amenities, such as the um, trash cans seat and seating options. Next slide, please. Um, so this is a summary. This is the same table that was provided in the staff report of those funded items. It comes out estimated to a bit less than the $250,000 projected funding from the group. It also includes uh, several items that were included in the um, resiliency project. So for example, some of the lighting was already scheduled to be replaced and some of the seating was already scheduled to be replaced. So the cost there is the difference between what we already have bid prices for and we're tending, and intending on paying for and then the um, cost of the new amenities. Next slide, please. Um, to be funded by others, um, a little clarification on these interpretive panels. So outfits such as the Sanctuary District typically will pay for the development of the content of the panels and the layout and the panels themselves, but not the what the panels are situated on, such as a kiosk or some kind of like st structure that you would place them on. So that part would be funded by others, like the development of the signage and the actual printing of the signage piece. Next slide. And then we get into our unfunded items that were identified in the scoping of the project and the public outreach, but not intended to be funding uh, either by others or by the CWEP group fundraising. So those include uh, number five and six there on that rendering, which are pavers at the entrance and a medallion, um, landscaping improvements, and then improvements to any air of the area up on Wharf Road that leads down to the wharf. Next slide. Additional unfunded items are the kiosk or structure that the informational panels would be on and additional bike racks, Next slide. And then any additional structures such as lifeguard storage or a shower. Uh, next slide. So this is a summary of unfunded uh, items that were identified in this project scoping. Uh, the lifeguard, ski storage, and shower are independent structures. Those are really rough estimates. And to have those projects come 
come to be would be really separate projects, not something that we'd really be able to achieve in the same time as we're reopening the wharf next year. Uh, the other items are things if they were to be funded by additional fundraising or other sources that would be achievable to execute with the rest of the project. Next slide, please. Uh, also for your consideration in the packet this evening is the fundraising partnership resolution. Uh, you may recall in June, council approved an agreement with Wharf to Wharf to be the fiduciary for the fundraising. Um, this resolution uh, includes information on the CWEP group and then being designated the funds that they're fundraising to be designated towards the specific items in this project and then attached to the resolution. It also stipulates that the city and CWEP would uh, have discussions if that funding was to exceed or fall short of the goal. Next slide, please. And then lastly included for council consideration is the donor recognition administrative policy for this project. Very similar to the Jade Street Park Playground project, there would be recognition on a donor wall for donations of $1,000. There would be items uh, for major donors that would be on the item and on the wall. And then it also includes a um, statement on maintenance, which is, uh, was included in the additional items. There was a correction here where the reasonable effort to maintain would be 20 years instead of 10. So we would maintain anything that ended up being constructed from this project for 20 years with the recognition for whoever provided the donation. However, we would not uh, maintain them if the war for some reason were to close, be destroyed, burned down, et cetera. Uh, next slide. So the recommendation here is on the screen for you, and I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Oh, and additionally, <laughs> there are more slides on this um, from our CREC group. Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, City Council members. Um, thank you uh, very much for the opportunity tonight to give a brief overview of uh, our CWEP program um, and the group of people that have come together. Um, we have pulled together a couple of slides here that we'd like to just give uh, a review of the process that we've been going through uh, for the last couple of months. Um, next slide, please. Um, just, you know, just so we all can step back in time when we remember the storms in January, some, some pictures of the storm as they came in. Um, as we remember the head of the wharf and so sad to see the damage that was done. And this last picture just, and that was think probably one of the big waves that took out a large chunk of it. Um, with the storm, um, you know, we, a lot of us in the community came down to the village and there was just this um, motion outcry of what was going on. Um, and there was just this call for action from the community. And you see a list of community members that have stepped forward to um, be a leadership team for Sea Weapon. I just like to, uh, Personally, just acknowledge them. We have Terry Arnone, who's unable to be here this evening. We have Vicki Gwynn. We have Karen Hanna. We have Lori Hill, Heidi Kellison, Christine McBroom, Scott McConville, Gail Ortiz, and Joe Paladrani. Um, these community members have been absolutely amazing in the time that they spent in pulling together this vision and working together with the city. You know, the first thing that came up was why. Um, the first why was, you know, the, we know that there's a ton of support for the wharf. And again and again, we see it. But again, we look back to the last time when the community spoke forward, spoke about it and stepped forward was in 2018 when they passed Measure F and some funding was provided for the wharf. The next item was, you know, the wharf, we feel, and I think a lot of people in the community feel it's the most iconic part and, and of the Capitola and has rich history that we all share in. Um, we hear every day, and we still hear today, you know, a huge outcry from the community that they want the wharf to come back better than it was when it first happened. And then, you know, it's been amazing in some of our preliminary fundraising as we've been going through the wharf destruction from the January 5th storm. It was devastating to so many people that we're getting donations from not people just in Capitola, not just Santa Cruz County. You know, we're getting them from the Central Valley, um, which has been amazing, and people are reaching out for volunteering and stuff like that. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Christine. Um, I think we can all agree that that wharf is very important. Before I had children, um, my wedding pictures were on that wharf. Now that I have children, we go out to the red boats. They caught their first fish there. 
So for me and for all of us, it goes generation to generation as to why people use that wharf. So we started gathering um, January 1. Uh, we meet one time per week. Um, each week, we kind of picked apart the things we needed to accomplish. Um, so when we started, we said, well, we need to be laser focused on our goal. What is our name, first and foremost? What is our goal and what is our mission? Our goal and our mission, the, the mission is the Wharf Enhancement Project will raise funds to enhance and rebuild the wharf. Our goal is to provide funding to help create a welcoming destination that celebrates the rich history and the natural beauty of Capitola, while also promoting economic growth and recreational inclusivity. In collaboration with City Council, we're committed to working with residents, businesses, and local organizations to ensure the wharf remains a cherished gathering place and a source of pride for generations to come. So once we created those things, we said, well, how are we gonna get the word out? So we sat and thought about how are we gonna do our outreach to find out what do the residents even want? Um, so we started with creating a survey and that survey was around, why do you visit the wharf? What do you wanna see happen to the wharf? And we surveyed not only visitors, but also residents. We had about um, north of a thousand um, survey responses. And from there, we took those responses and said, well, we wanna gather our community for a night and so we had a community outreach evening. Over 65 community members attended that meeting. Um, and then from there we said, this was one of our biggest hurdles. How are we going to make our, our donations that we receive tax deductible? After doing the research, it was six to eight months to establish a 5013C and it was about $5,000 in fees. And our goal is to be as quick as possible with this goal and keep our costs down. And so we partnered with Here Comes Wharf to Wharf to save the day. We partnered with Wharf to Wharf so that each one of the contributions is completely tax deductible. Um, from there, we organized and created informational tables, again, getting the word out, and we do Wednesday night concerts. We did the same at the Wharf to Wharf race, gathering more information about what people want to see on the, the wharf. Um, we created an Instagram site, um, a website, um, and then from there, now that our foundation is built, um, it's time to go find other volunteers to get involved in more outreach as well as fundraising. So we've started to do that as well. Um, the next slide is just some pictures. So the first picture to the left, um, you probably have all seen It's a Wonderful Life. It was a little bit like that sentiment. Um, it was a really great night, great energy. Lots of community members came together and provided lots of really great ideas. And that's where we got the ideas from what you see in the previous presentation. Um, the middle slide or the middle picture is there was a 15 year old who led, not only presented, but led one of the breakout groups. And to us that provides intrinsic desire to keep taking care of our wharf as well as being a steward of the Monterey Bay sanctuary that we have. Um, the top picture is us getting the word out at Wharf to Wharf, and the bottom picture is the Wednesday night concerts, getting the word out. So from all that outreach, this is what we heard. This is what the community would like. They would like um, better lighting, uh, better seating, I think that's what that says, shaded areas, um, more family-oriented areas, um, enhanced fish cleaning station, uh, some viewing stations at the end of the wharf or even at the beginning. Um, they want a number of different artistic features. They want to keep the iconic look with, as you walk down the wharf and you see the Venetian, we want to keep that going throughout the wharf. That was what a lot of people requested. Um, a water drinking station, um, a shower or like a foot shower as well. Um, and then intuitive signing or signage, whether it's a history about the wharf or um, environmental education, they would like to see that as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Gail Ortiz. This is the Sea Whip uh, Dog and Pony Show tonight. Well, thank you staff, uh, staff and uh, council members. So the, as you've heard, there are already funded funds available for this wharf. Go ahead, next. Structural upgrades as needed. 
repair and replace and add additional pylons, replace decking, replace railings, and replace damaged and missing items such as benches and lighting standards. And these things are all funded currently. We, the community, have come together to add to those funds to create a more user-friendly environment for the surface of the wharf. Next slide. Our community vision in partnership with the city would be to replace all of the old lighting and standards so that they all match, replace all the benches so that they match, replace the old disposal cans, and in addition to those basic things, we propose the kinds of things that bring families together on wharves, bring people out to come and see the new wharf. And that would be the first one, it would be the fish scavenger hunt, which would be fish that are made out of bronze embedded in the wharf that are fish that are out in the Monterey Bay um, already. And they would lead the, the participants through to the different areas of the wharf that will have further signage, interpretive signage, seating, and that kind of thing. Next. Viewing stations, which are also the visitor binoculars, the sightseeing binoculars, we don't have those out in the wharf right now. So having three beautiful sightseeing binoculars is going to really enhance that wharf. Children and family mosaic to bring a little bit of color to it and also to bring out the community to work on this project together helps the next generation have an ownership to this wharf and feel like when they go out there, they're not going to tag it. They're not going to destroy the wharf in any way. Uh, and then the, the final is uh, more tables. We heard loud and clear that people want more areas to sit on the wharf. And we thought about shade structure. We need more shade out on the wharf. So we found tables that have their own shade. So there would be three different areas on the wharf that would have all of these components and the fish leading through to those different components. Um, it makes sense to replace all of these elements. Uh, it would be a shame to put up, put put out, put back out there all of the old things when, when we have the opportunity to, to have some nice new ones. And plus we'll have more longevity in these new lighting structures and, and benches and things like that. Um, Next slide. This is, I think you've seen this before. This is uh, what RRM has um, done for the renderings. After tonight's meeting, I believe staff will be, go, I think we'll be using staff a little bit more to work with our committee and the community on how we implement it, how, that, how this vision actually works. Next slide. So the campaign. This is already a very successful campaign. We decided to raise $250,000, a fairly modest amount. After a few months and having not even gone out to the public, people just keep coming out of the woodwork and giving us money, and we've already raised $125,000. So that's, yeah, that's Capitola. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And it, and it speaks to the, near, the, the, the feeling that people have about this wharf. It's very near and dear. So once we've received the final okay from the council tonight, we will start our campaign in earnest, and we hope to raise more than this $250,000. But we would also like a commitment from the council tonight that if for some reason we fall short on this, um, these donations, that they will backfill for us, help us backfill um, any amount. This, uh, the estimates that you saw were developed by staff. Jessica did, did a great job. She got it, got it out pretty quickly. We haven't gone out to bid on any of these things, so we're not exactly sure how much they're going to come to. So we would love to partner with the city uh, to, to guarantee that we can replace all of these things and, and open this wharf for something that we can feel proud of. When I worked with um, the campaign for the library, it was, it was one of those things that did, did the same thing that we're doing now. People came out of the woodwork. We thought we would raise $350,000. We raised over $550,000 in Capitola. That's a lot of money. People in Capitola want to support these kinds of things. We were lauded in, our, in the community in, gen, in general, all over the county, for the kind of job that we did on that, that library. People say that this led the way for the other branches, that they, it was a high bar 
we set a high bar and they're trying to match it now. And that's the kind of thing that we want to have this wharf do. We want to have say, and we want people to say, man, Capitola really knows how to do it. Do it upright. Next slide. So in appreciation, the amazing community that's already come out and the city council that's already raised all the funds necessary to build the structure of the wharf, city staff that's worked with us long, hard hours on this already. The wharf to wharf, without them, I, you know, we would not have gotten a good start on this. KSBW that we are partnering with, they have become our partner and they will be do, helping us do fundraising. And the Santa Cruz Sentinel, who's been there with us the whole way. Look out, Santa Cruz, the same. Capitola Soquel Times. Capitola Chamber of Commerce. Capitola Soquel Chamber of Commerce. So you can see that we have a lot of support through this community. And we're hoping tonight that you will not only see your way clear to possibly backfill for our, the things that we're going to raise money for. We hope you don't have to. But we also hope that tonight you would see your way clear to direct staff to fund those unfunded portions of the, um, the project that we feel would really bring this thing all together and make us all very proud. So final slide, slide please. Uh, if those, if council staff, those in the audience, those at home see their way clear to support this, you can go to www.capitolavillage.com backslash wharf and donate whatever amount you see fit. And if you see that you want to donate a lot, call me. I'm available. <laughs> so we're available for any questions you might have for us tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, council, questions? We really don't have a question, but more of comments that uh, we really only have one time to do this and get it right. So I think it's really important that we see this through. Super excited and impressed by the detail that CWIP has done, you know, laying everything out along with staff. I just uh, believe it's truly something we have to all get behind and we'll all work together and uh, make sure we get it done. Yeah, I have some questions. Thank you. Um, great presentation. Thank you to all of you for all of your hard work so far. Um, my question is about timeline. You've started. What was your, what's the end date to reaching the goal? And um, I don't know if Jessica has this information. So if a member of CWEP wants to respond, that I can answer that. We don't really have a timeline. We are going to raise funds until we get to 250. And if it looks like we got to 250 too quickly, we're going to continue to raise funds. Okay, thank you. Um, and then Jessica, you mentioned in your presentation about the 20 year policy. Is that in alignment with our new policy language around the plaques? Or was that something you guys just, because I don't remember 20 years. So that was new language we came up with. Um, we were working on language for the plaques, if I remember correctly. I think the council direction was to come back with the final plaque policy that had sort of more clear language for the end, end of times. Uh, and so this is language we're proposing now for this, uh, this particular donor recognition. Okay, but it's on the wharf, and we still are creating a policy around things that are on the wharf. So I'm not understanding why we would have two separate language languages two different statements around that i think the thinking is is that, that at the end of the day this policy for the donor recognition for this project moves forward as written that we will use it as a template when we come back with the memorial plaque language that's sort of the thinking okay um I got, i'll save my comments then for about that when we get to that um Gail, I'm sorry that you have to get up and down. I have a couple more questions. You might want to stay up I want to hang out for a minute. <laughs> um, so the binoculars, were they going to be designed to be free to the community? Yes, they are. Okay, great. Um, and then I just needed some clarification on the language that's written here in our packet versus kind of the request I'm hearing from, from CWEP this evening. Um, it's written that 
CWEP raises more funds to complete, the city agrees to meet with you and identify other opportunities. If they do not meet, the city agrees to meet with CWEP and evaluate options to increase um, the project funding. Can you tell me what the city is? And then maybe, Gail, you can clarify on what your ask is this evening, because that sounds like two different things to me huh? that's in writing and what you're asking here. I'm sorry. I, uh, what, what document were you reading so page, first? Page 153. This is the um, resolution that's being presented to us for approval this evening. And it says, now, therefore, be it further resolved. And there's two things, if they raise it and if they don't raise it. And it's not really in alignment to the request this evening. Yeah, so, so the language the language that you, so if they don't meet the fundraising goals, the language that's in the resolution, it says the city agrees to meet with CWEP and evaluate options to either increase project funding or reduce the scope. So basically, if they don't raise enough money, we're going to talk about ways to increase the funding or ways we could reduce the scope. That's what's in the resolution. That's what's proposed by staff. And those are, that's right, and that's what we understand. And those are the things that we outlined that we are, are raising funds for. I think what I, I probably confused the council when I asked for further discussion about the unfunded right. parts, and that's something that staff has not addressed because that's a council direction okay. um, so that's that's that that's, that's, question? that's much clearer so okay thank so um thank you uh so for for staff when it says the city agrees to me are is it going to be you or are you bringing it back to council and does it need what does the city mean i think it just depends on the scope of the overage or underage if that's what we're, if we're talking about the language in the resolution like if they went way over right I think presumably if they went way over and talked about funding something that really hasn't been part of this project, I think that needs to go back to the city council. If they were over by 10 grand and said, you know, we're going to put in some more money for bike racks, I think that that's something potentially staff could cover. But if council isn't comfortable with that, tell us and we would bring it back here. And so the reason I, I ask is because we don't, they're not prioritized on the presentation today where there's kiosk and it doesn't say how many, it doesn't say what type of shower or where and, um, so I just don't know that we've had that conversation on prioritizing and if the community gives more feedback to this group that there's bigger needs that might need to supersede something that was presented today. So I'm just curious whether we need to ensure we, is it safe, and maybe this is for, our, um, for Samantha, like do we want to go into those, best, that, do we need to be that specific in identifying the city or a council and do we need to be more specific on, you know, um, how much overage and underage <laughs> that it would come back to us at as council? I'm. I, I don't think you do. Okay. Um, but the city manager. If the council would like, I'm absolutely fine bringing it back. If we if we exceed the fundraising targets, and you know, I would work with CWEP, we might identify a couple priorities, bring it to council for approval. If that's that's totally okay. fine. If the I mean, I would just like their input on how we prioritize the underfunded, and I don't want to leave that. You know, I would like to hear from them on what under under underfunded projects they would like us to pick first if we were to go over, which sounds promising. <laughs> And I, I hope that that'll be the case. But, you know, please. Um, so you bring up a great point. I think those, that first order of items is our first priority. And then they, we talked about those latter items that got us to 433000 That was the second priority. Like if right. we had extras, then we'll go there. So, okay. So and a that's, little bit of a yeah. priority. And that's what I'm referring to as the underfunded. Um, so please. Those are the things that I was asking council to uh, to direct staff to fund out of the approximately nine hundred thousand that you that that are available for this project for the wharf project that have not been you don't have, aren't earmarked for anything else. There is there are funds for those unfunded, and we would hope that the city would fund those. If we raise over our amount, we would help fund those. But we would like all of those that was to be funded and and have the city commit to funding those. Perfect. Thank you. Um, our budget hearing our re re comes back in March or mid. When is our? Our next 
budget review will be February. Will be okay. Year. So, and I think that'll be a perfect time for us to talk, have that conversation about what to do with the funding because um, we can't do it this evening. Um, so, I'm hearing to answer my questions. I'm hearing that they're as written. We feel comfortable that any overage, or yeah, it, it's enough that it'll come back to council so we can hear what their needs are. If that's correct, that sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and free binoculars. Got it. Those are my questions. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, I just have a quick question um, about the survey responses. Do we have access to those? Yeah, staff test. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, and my other question was for the binoculars. So, great. I think I just had, I guess, more of a specific question. So the budget, um, the 233000 um, those items listed in that, those are all the new items that CWIP is wanting, right? Or the city is wanting. Um, okay, so that, all those new items are included and in coming in under the 250 mark. I guess I should emphasize that the 233500 is an imprecise estimate. So I think we can say it's staff thinks it's about 250, hopefully a little bit less. And that's coming from the money that has been donated. Okay, sorry. I like okay, thank you. Um okay, I th think that was my only question. Um any other follow-ups? Okay. Um, I can take this out to public comment on the item. You will be given your three minutes. Good evening. Um, I, I support the, uh, the uh, foundation and what they're doing. I'd just like to add a couple of things to this is that let's don't ever forget that this is a, this is actually a, a fishing in a boat pier to start with. You know, that is the function of this pier. And actually, I'm not sure we've looked into it, but um, it is a Coast Guard designated safe refuge pier. And so is there money from the Coast Guard to help us keep this thing up? Worth looking into. Um, the, uh, does anybody in the room know what a davit is? Yeah? Yeah. That's what lifts the boats in and out of the water. And that's what this pier was famous. That's what they do. I'm hoping we still have that service there. For instance, the, uh, the the boat rental place still is going to need to lift boats in and out. So what's going to happen if you allow people to bring boats in? I'm not sure that that's part of the program. But you're going to need to keep a pretty clear path all day long down the middle of that pier to keep it open. So whatever you design in there, it's really got to be clear clear passageway for that and also safety vehicles on that. Um, <clears throat> I'll make a commitment. I will pay for the fish cleaning station. <laughs> Me, me and Jojo, me and Jojo will pay for the fish cleaning station. There's a start. And again, anybody in the audience, you can pick one of these items and, and, and put it up there and put some money up for it. Okay. Remember one thing. <laughs> uh -oh. Remember one thing, though. The ocean always wins. Thank you. Great. Anybody else in the house wish to speak? Anybody online? There are no hands raised. Great, thank you. Okay, we'll take this back to council for deliberation. Um, if anybody's ready to make a motion, adopting the resolution. Yeah, I'll make a motion um, to approve the resolution of the city council of the city of Capitola formalizing a fundraising partnership with the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project Group. I'll second it. Great, we have a motion and a second. Maybe we have a roll call, please. Councilmember Brooks. City Manage oh, Julia said our managers whispering over a mic. There was one more piece of the uh, recommended, the recommended action to approve the donor, donor recognition right. policy as well. There was a lot. What's the, uh, it's not in your recommendation. Yeah, that one's not, that one's not, um, that one's not ready. We were going to talk about it, actually, because it's not in alignment with our new policy that hasn't come back to council. So that's not part of my motion. Okay. okay. 
right, so that portion will be brought back to council in conjunction with. Yeah, we're waiting on staff to bring back our policy on um, donor stuff, on plaques and all of that. And so I want us just to be in alignment with. But the plaques aren't necessarily the donorship. So people buy, pla I don't know if we can talk about it all the way. Um, sure. If it relates to this, if you are trying to differentiate or draw similarities between the yeah. other policy, then sure. It, it would be sort of different because the plaques or just something that somebody's buying in recognition of a loved one or something. And then we're left to hold it up for as long as we decide. But this is a donorship program where the money's going to an actual item of the city. So um, can I call the question for the first item and then we can get to that? You can make a motion. It sounds it's, like you made I did. a motion. And, yeah, and I think to Joe. Council Member Clark, did you make us? So we have her first and a second. So Council Member Brooks? Aye. Council Member Clark? Aye. Council Member Peterson? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. Thank you. So then do you want this to come back? Yeah. So I guess I just need clarity, and I don't know that the language is even accurate on what um, the organization wanted this evening as well. So this is also why I bring up the question. Um, but, at, you know, at a high level, we have a plaque program that plaques go on the wharf and on our benches. These are plaques that are also going to go on our wharf. They both generate different types of funding. But I just want to make sure things are the same um, because we're overall going to be in charge of those plaques no matter what at the end of the day. And so I think staff just needs to think about whether we want to process these or not. Um, and so I think if we had, if we wanted to have two, or if you, if that was the recommendation, recommendation from staff to have two, then sure. But I don't know that we have talked about it. And I also want to bring up that I don't think that this is the right language that's in our packet presented today from, from what they wanted. But I know we can't interact with them. So I'm just not sure it's that they updated. So let me just be clear. We distributed an updated donor recognition policy for the wharf this evening. So you guys have that. Is this what we got at 5 o'clock or 4.51? Yes, and it included basically just slightly different language around how long the donors were going to be recognized. And as Director Khan summarized in her presentation, essentially it's 20 years the city will agree to maintain it. Did CWEP see this? Yes. Or 4.51? So Council Member Brooks. You and the other council members can ask questions of specific audience members. The audience members cannot um, yell at or okay. ask questions of so the I'll council except in public comment. Great. Thank you for the permission. Would anyone like to address council on this item? Thank you, Heidi Tellison, member of CWEP. So I noticed a problem with the language as written in the original packet, and I brought it forward through our leadership. I've not had a chance or was not aware that there's been some revised language. I just knew that there was a rumor that there would be, so I've not had a chance to look at that. And since I'm going to be one of the people that asks our larger donors for sponsorships, I'd really like to see the language so that we know what we're getting into. Thank you. Great. So I have maybe a potential solution or recommendation here. Maybe since the CWEP team hasn't had, I had a chance to talk to Gail about it, but that's not obviously the whole team. So maybe the CWEP team could take a look at this and then we could just continue it till the end of the night and we can bring it back and see if we can get it done this evening. And if not, we can punch it out three weeks. Does that work? End of night. Um, I'm seeing nods. Okay. What What about reconciling it with the other policy? Um, I don't know if I have enough time to read it, to be honest. Um, what do you think, council member? I think it would make sense to have one policy. I think those things, like you were saying, are very similar spirit behind them are different I, I think it would just yeah it, yeah I, I think it would be simpler to just bring it back and, and review that and make sure that policy is already like tonight yeah, to maintain it is. yeah I don't know that we need it approved tonight either way right there's you're gonna go fundraise and make money and it's gonna be good and um, I will just finish my thought real quick um, and it would be nice just to see a side-by-side side then maybe what the differences are. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just haven't 
it literally dawned on me right now that we have something coming back and I'm actually changing my mind on that. Changing my Yeah. <laughs> So, what do you change? I'm, your happy, I'm question happy to, to move uh, forward with this. Oh my tonight. gosh! Did you get the stairs? <laughs> so can I just really? Quick, member, I'm sorry. I just wanted to hear from him. Right. Okay. okay so just really quickly, the, the, the memorial plaque policy covers the plaques on the wharf, the plaques up on Depot Hill, the plaque. We, it covers the entire memorial program. So I wouldn't recommend putting the donor recognition policy for the wharf for this particular project into that policy. Uh, I do think if you want. Our internal thinking was is that we were going we're going to come back with some more language about the plaques on the wharf, right? The council has told us to do that, and so we were proposing this language to say it's 20 year commitment for the donations uh, to CWEB, and then we were going to use that as a model, and we'll be bringing an update back to uh, to bring to update it for the memorial plaques on the wharf. We can hold off, we can wait three weeks, and we can do them both together, uh, if the council would rather, uh, or we can proceed as staff has suggested this evening, presuming we get the feedback from CWIP. I think we should get some more information from CWIP and see if we're accommodating them enough. So it was brought to my attention after Jamie and I had a conversation that the second item having to do with $10,000 is actually not written correctly. It, it, it says that uh, even up until 10, it, someone else found out that it was stated incorrectly. It wasn't something you and I talked about. But we would like it decided tonight because we've waited on our campaign. We can't start our camp, a real campaign until we know what we're telling people, you know, about that, what they'll get for the money that they're getting. I think that is why it should be thought of as a different thing than right. our memorial plaques. Right. I agree. Yeah. So we would. So if we, you, yeah, can you guys come back to us and we can table this till the end of the yeah, meeting? It's. I think it's pretty simple. I, I, don't I have a suggestion. I, oh, okay. I, I, if if we could get perhaps written uh, hard copies for all of you, um, I could work with you over the next whatever we've got hour, whatever, to any concerns that you have. I'll work on drafting some language that might meet those, and then we can come back and talk to council um, when there's a space in the agenda, if it suits okay. the mayor, if that works yes, that's for the council fine with me. and for you. Great. Okay. So we have the motion for the first half. We're tabling the second half till further notice, till whenever we decide. Okay, great. Well, I know maybe some of you have to stay for this next one. I'm not sure. Um, so item 9B is our next item here, the Oktoberfest event permit. The recommended action tonight is to consider approving a new single-day general event, general special event permit on the 14th of October 2023 for Capitola Village Benefit Concert to fundraise the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project. Great. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council, staff. Um, well, first, I want to start with a fun fact that the city manager taught me today, which is when you spell the word Oktoberfest, it's spelled with a K. So if you didn't know that, you know that now. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, and I'm going to start with just making one correction to the staff report um, that we incorrectly identified that uh, CWEP and the chamber were actually partners on this event that I'm going to present to you right now. This event is actually organized by the BIA. Next. All right. So the Oktoberfest. Uh, we recently, the police department received a submittal, uh, an application for a benefit concert modeled uh, like the Twilight concerts, seeking a new general event permit, which is requiring council approval. You're all aware of the special event process uh, where you, the program was established. Lots of people like to have, organizations like to have events in Capitola because it's a wonderful place. And so we have an approval process and it's to, which is divided into two categories to identify two separate types of events, general and minor. This would be considered a general event because it is more than 200 people and has notable impacts to the city resources. So the Oktoberfest fundraiser, BIA submitted an application. We have Mary Beth Kahalen here tonight to answer questions later if you have any. Um, for a benefit concert, 
and proposed a beer garden to raise funds, much like the Beyond the Storm event that we had after the storm. Proceeds will be donated, since we're talking about funding, donated to the Capital Wharf Enhancement Project, affectionately known as CWEP, and they are seeking a new general uh, special event permit. Next slide. Essentially, the layout is exactly what we had, uh, what was presented for the Beyond the Storm event. It would be Saturday, October 14th, from 12 to 8, Esplanade Park, it would be closed, that area would be closed down. We were, there would be, there's an expected 2,000 to 3,000 people in attendance possibly, and there would be a beer garden there um, in that same area, as you can see the, in that blocked off area, the, exactly where, the same location we had with the Beyond the Storm event. So lastly, we're just looking for uh, direction from council to approve the general special event for the Capitola Village Benefit Concert um, to include the encroachment permit and amplified sound. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council questions? Well, I would like to talk about maybe the, some of the fees that are included with this, and since the money is going to be going to CWIP, if we could uh, not tack on those fees from, from the city, is that possible? Fees such as the bandstand, all the, mm -hmm. okay. We just had that at our, one of our last council meetings where we updated the cost, but I was hoping for this, when we get ready to approve it, if we could waive it. Okay, do you want to comment on fees? So, um, in terms of waiving fees, I don't, uh, we, do you want to, yeah, do you want to jump in here? <laughs> yeah, sure. um, and, I, and I understand, it. and the challenge with waiving fees is that we have a lot of organizations that have that similar request, and we adamantly reject those just because it, it's a slippery slope as we approach those um, as, like I said, there's a lot of people that want to um, use that space, and like I said, we want to just make sure that uh, we're fair and equal with everyone as, as they as they occupy that area. So uh, there's a lot of great organizations, and like I said, it's really hard to say no to that sometimes, but that's been our direction moving forward. So I just want to put that out there. I will also note that reiterate that the points the chief made, we do charge the Public Safety Foundation that raises money for the police department. They pay the fees. Everybody else pays the fees. And I think there are also, there can become sort of First Amendment type questions, which the city attorney could get into about deciding, you know, it's okay to waive the fees for this group, but not that group. So my recommendation is, is hold the line, keep the fees, but that's obviously something we could talk further about. Thank you. We're still going to raise so much money. We are even with the fees, I think. Okay, anybody, any other questions? No. Anybody in the public wish to speak on this item? I understand that it's difficult to weigh one organization against another. And waiving fees can be controversial, but I will say tonight, we just adopted a resolution where all the monies raised by CWEP, assuming CWEP ends up being the beneficiary of this concert, goes directly to the city. I can't think of any better uh, reason to waive fees. Thank you. Anybody else in house? Or is there anybody online? There are no hands raised, Mayor. Great, we'll take it back to council for deliberation or motion. Actually, is it too late to ask a question? No, go for it. Um, is 100% of the proceeds from this event going to CWEP? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's my question. Uh, okay, but no markup on expenses? Excellent, thank you. I have a question, because 
generally, we waive fees if it's a city-sanctioned event, since we know that this event and funds are going to be coming back to the city for the wharf enhancements. Um, have you talked with the organizer about making this a city-sanctioned, I mean, am I using the right word, city-sanctioned event and putting our seal on the flyer for October? That's certainly an option. I mean, that was what we did for the, um, forgive me, the Beyond the Flood event uh, was it was city, we organized it, city staff organized it. That's not the case with this event. Um, I think rather than saying that we're waiving the fees, saying that it's a city event is probably cleaner. Uh, I think otherwise, if we say we're waiving the fees, it really becomes one of the criteria we're using. You know, why does the Public Safety Foundation pay the fees when they're donating the city so that's probably the cleanest path um but then does that require more work for the city if we're it, it certainly could um you know i guess from i think city staff's position is is i would rather reduce the amount of funds that are raised uh and and get you know if, if at the end of the day it's all going to be city money if the funds that are being raised are being donated to the city it just as much cleaner for everybody for the city moving forward if everybody pays fees so if at the end of the day they raise you know twelve thousand dollars versus fifteen thousand dollars because they paid the city fees that's probably better for us in the long term but we're talking three hundred dollars right the fees are it's something like that yeah it's yeah so four hundred dollars yeah. so i mean it's literally nothing but what i've talked what we've talked to you before about is city sanctioned events so that because that's the process in waiving fees, and so if we're sticking with process, we are, this isn't a city. Sink. But could we, if that, in order to align with process, because I'm happy to make a motion and just say waive them, if that's at the end of the day the easiest thing. But um, I'm trying to follow your policy of city-sanctioned events, and I know that this event is already organized and has all the people, and the work is pretty much done, and the four hundred dollars was going to cover staff time anyways. So it's kind of the same thing, I'm just trying to follow, follow you know, best practice of a city-sanctioned event. Yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't recommend that approach, but I think it's better than waiving the fees and saying that, you know, the city could become a co-organizer for the event. Okay, so there's two options to make it a city-sanctioned event or to simply waive the fees. Either one has the same end result. Neither create more work for staff but they both have the same end result. Is that accurate? Well, I think if we were to make it credibly city organized, there would be some work that the city would do. I think moving forward, then it would become an ongoing question then about what events we might be deciding are going to become sort of city sanctioned, city organized as well, because I think we would end up seeing that for most future events. So I think that that's whether or not it creates a bunch of work this time, I think it's Frankly, opening Pandora's box is the biggest issue. That's what I was going to, I was going to use that exact phrase. I, I think it's a negligible amount of money. The city's going to be contributing significantly more than that anyways. And I think it's just opening up to these kind of debates ongoing about whether the city is going to waive fees or sponsor events from any of the other, you know, 200 nonprofit agencies or amazing causes that our community engages in. That was a comment that I was going to make is that we, many special event, uh, general event permits come across my desk weekly, and they're all for great causes, lots of nonprofits, and fees are a continuous conversation. Um, so what I would share with council, just my additional thoughts about that this is funds that are coming directly back to a project of ours, like if we did the community center or if we did the park or if we did, you know, something that's coming straight back to a city owned created thing, not a nonprofit, not businesses, not any of that sort of stuff, but this is literally our wharf and the money's it's circular. <laughs> so either we they pay it now and we get it later or we just take care of it. Now I kind of see it as the same thing. But I mean, I, I'm open to hearing, I mean, that's why I'm bringing it up today, because I feel like it's not the 25 different nonprofits who ask for things. It's not our WAVES group or, you know, it's none of those. This is money that's literally coming to pay back for our structural stuff. Well, and our, 
what how many extra PD are we gonna have to have on for an event like that? Like which those those fees would go to, right? We have not discussed extra staff when it comes to that. I would I believe it would also put some stress on public works because it just creates that space where they need to clean up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so to me, waiving the fees um, to keep it clean, to keep this more status quo moving forward, um, I don't think that we should do that. Okay, so I'll attempt with my motion, and then I'll let council, to, council deliberate. I'd like to make a motion to make um, to consider this e event on October a capitalist city sanctioned event, therefore waiving the fees. That's my motion. Second, so okay, that motion dies. Do we have a separate motion? I'll move to approve a new single day general special event permit on October 14th, 2023, for Capitola Village Benefit Comp to fundraise for the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project. I'll second that. Okay, we have a first and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye, thank you. Okay. Moving on to 9C, C, D, B, G, C, V, grant closeout. <laughs> the recommended action tonight is to conduct a duly noticed public hearing to receive a report summarizing the allocation of grant funding under the state letters that I just said, agreements, and direct staff to proceed with submitting required closeout documents to the state. We have Katie here. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm excited to bring this item before you. It's uh, been three years in the making. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to Paul Ashby of Adams Ashby Group. Um, Paul has worked with the city for years on CDBG grants and our home program. And uh, in the time of COVID, when we were learning that we were going to get funding from the federal government that went through the state, Paul was instrumental in making this a smooth transaction. So. Um, with us tonight is Paul Ashby, and I think a few of you recognize them. Um, Commissioner or Council Member Brooks worked on the ad hoc committee, and then before becoming a city council member, uh, Council Member Pedersen worked with Paul with the CD with a SBDC grant directly. So, Paul, you can take thank you, thank you, Katie. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Paul Ashby, Adams Ashby Group. Uh, good to see some of you uh, again. It's been a number of years. Um, our firm has worked with the city in some capacity off and on over the pro probably past 10 years, um, back with some of your housing programs back in 2013-14 with your housing authority when you had a rehab and first-time home buyer program. Uh, but tonight we're going to be going over CWG CV, um, and we're going to be doing some closeouts for a number of grants that we had. Next slide, please. So I'm going to just give you a, just a quick rundown and crash course on CDBG. You can tell I've been doing this a number of years because the letters just come right off the tongue. So the city of Capitola is a non-entitlement community, meaning that you apply for these funds directly from the state each year when they come out with an application. Um, when COVID hit back in March of 2020, uh, the CARES Act, which you guys probably all read about, was passed. And every time one of those acts is passed, usually the quickest way for the government to get it down to people is to put it into a program that exists, which for in this case was the community development block grant. So it made it easy just to funnel money to uh, counties and cities and in every state um, of the country to get this money. And so this is where these dollars came from. Um, you didn't, uh, all you had to do was apply for this money. It was allocated to you. You just had to actually submit the application. So there was two rounds of funding. We called it CV1 and CV2. Um, over the, the course of those two rounds, um, in addition to a little bit of program income, which we won't get too far into, but it's just some money that you had on, on hand from some previous loans that you put into this program, 
you received just about $490,000 that uh, we worked with staff to apply for uh, and then implement. Next slide, please. So on your screen here um, is a list of the organizations that, that received funding um, that we'll just hit on briefly after each one here. But we have Second Harvest, uh, Community Bridges, Gray Bears, SBDC. I also do want to just make one point that we, we did fund another organization, CAB, Community Action Board, um, to do your rental assistance program at the time. We, we actually thought that was going to be the biggest need when COVID first hit, to actually uh, use funds for folks uh, that were behind on rent. We actually got the contract, got the money, and when that happened, the state uh, came out and passed the ERAP program, the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Uh, and so they said all other, other other programs need to stop because the state is pumping in billions of dollars to do this, and we don't want to have what we call a duplication of benefits, meaning people are applying to the same program twice and double dipping. So we stayed in contact with CAB for a number of months, and um, it just the, the ERAP program kept going and going, and so eventually we just had to move forward with moving to, moving the money, and, that, and that's what we did. So these were the four organizations that ended up getting funded. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the first one you have here is uh, Gray Bears. I think all these organizations the council is very familiar with. I know that you've funded them in the past. Um, they've been great to work with. Uh, some of these numbers, these come from their report, so I can't probably directly answer any follow-ups on those specific numbers. That's just what they give us. Um, but 392,000 um, pounds of food uh, help purchase. They obviously deliver these uh, throughout the city. Uh, and, and mainly to seniors uh, on a weekly basis. Next slide, please. Uh, second organization we have there is Second Harvest Food Bank. Um, you can see over $200,000, 200,000 pounds of food was purchased with this. Um, again, they fund a number of sites, obviously, throughout the county. Um, we try to make them to, to best report that for the city of Capitola just because they have a number, um, but that really went a long way in their agency as well. Next slide, please. Um, and then we also have Community Bridges. This was also a meal delivery program, and they also operate the uh, lift line uh, service, and they received approximately 144000 Next slide. Uh, and then lastly, we worked with the SBDC um, Small Business Development Center of Santa Cruz to implement a small business grant relief program for local businesses. Um, this, this program, it was a little difficult, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, one of your council members can attest to that. Um, the state had a number of uh, stringent requirements, let's say, uh, that made it quite difficult on folks to apply. At the same time, there was a number of programs that the state had put out that were far easier. And so um, we tried to help as many businesses as possible. It ended up being 10 businesses that we, that we did offer assistance to. We had started at $7,500 and then ended up increasing that grant amount um, to try to get that money moving. So um, 10 businesses were assisted with those. Again, that was grant, not a loan, that they were able just to utilize on um, operating expenses, rent, utilities, just things like that to help them out. So now that all funds has been expended, um, we're here to close out these grants. Uh, we've drawn everything down from the state, the city. It's a reimbursement process, just how this works. So the, the, the grantees that you awarded expend these dollars and then on a quarterly basis typically uh, provide our office with a uh, funds request and a report outlining their expenses, and then it goes to finance to pay. So once finance pays them, then we actually draw it down from the state. So that's how you get reimbursed. Uh, but now they've all been drawn to zero. And so now we're recommending that we uh, move forward with the closeout process, uh, which requires a public hearing. So I'll take it from Which is what I just said. Oh. <laughs> so tonight we're requesting a public hearing and then to direct staff to close out the CDBG CV program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any council questions? I have a comment. I just wanted to say thanks so much for all of your hard work and it was a really impactful program, definitely to the small businesses that I interacted with. Um, and it was very difficult to get that money out, but we did it and I'm surprised to see you back here so much later than I thought that was over with. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, any public comment on this item? 
Anybody online? There are no hands raised, Mayor. Great. We'll take it back to Council. Yeah, we need to make sure we're getting these in here. Any deliberation or motion? Do we need a motion to yeah. close this out? Yeah. So, oh, excuse me. Oh, okay. Motion to direct staff to proceed with submitting required closeout documents to the state. A second. Great. Motion and a second. So maybe we have a roll call, please. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Clark. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. And Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your work. All right. Item 9D. We have the Chapter 18.02 Affordable Inclusionary Housing. The action tonight is a recommended action is to introduce by title only waiving further reading of the text an ordinance of the city of Capitola amending chapter 18.02 of the Capitola Municipal Code affordable inclusionary housing. We have Katie again. Thank you, Mayor. Um, before you tonight are some really small amendments to the IHO, our inclusionary housing ordinance. Uh, a little background on this is that eight, this chapter was originally adopted in 2004. It contains the requirements for certain developments um, to include inclusionary housing within their development once they hit a certain threshold. Our IHO was met in 2013 and la most recently in 2021. Um, we've just been working with it after the 2021 cleanup, which was pretty thorough. There's a few items that we really need better definitions on and just small cleanup items. So next slide, please. The first one is our definition of primary residence. In most of our development agreements, there are definitions of primary residence that vary and those development agreements will continue to apply. Um, but they range from anywhere from a requirement to live there at least 50% of the time up to 10 months. We think the 10 month standard is consistent with what you see in our region when comparing other cities and, and the county. And typically there are exceptions that are included. So we've included an exception for um, up to one year due to, extent, um, to temporary circumstances to be able to rent out your apartment because those, those situations do come up. We heard a couple of instances during COVID when people had to go help their family members and leave the state but come back. So. Um, next slide, please. The second is the definition of qualified retirement plans. There are some uh, retirement plans that are not tax deferred, so we want to take out the word tax deferred in our um, definition. Next slide, please. Um, an amendment for the for sale housing unit sale price. Right now, our ordinance uses the term median income, and the practice um, is to restrict sales to low to moderate income households. So again, just to clean up on language, so, and eligibility requirements. Um, this, within our eligibility require, requirements, we also, we've got a tie to the consumer price index, and we say that this will happen on January 1st of every year, so we update these on January 1st, and then the state um, issues the income changes in usually like April, of the year, so then we have to update the eligibility requirements again. So we wanna tie that to when the state income limits are published. So we're just updating the income limits once a year and not twice a year. So that concludes my cleanup presentation for the IHO. And we'd like you tonight to introduce by title only waiving further reading of the text and ordinance of the city of Capitola amending chapter 18.02 affordable inclusionary housing. Thank you, and I'm available for questions. Great. Any questions? Anybody in the public wish to speak on this item? Or anybody online? There are no hands raised, Mayor. Great. We'll take it back to Council. I'll make a motion um, to waive further reading of the text and ordinance of the City of Capitola amending Chapter 18.02 of the Capitola Municipal Code, Affordable Inclusionary Housing. I'll second that motion. Great. First and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. Thank you. All right. And jumping down to 9E, League of California Cities Annual Conference Voting Delegate. This is uh, recommended action is to designate 
the city of Capitola's voting delegate and alternate to the League of Cities annual conference. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Tonight, um, as you are probably already aware, the League of California Cities, their annual conference will be held in Sacramento on September 20th through the 22nd. During the conference, a general assembly is held where they approve policy resolutions, which become league bylaws. The city of Capitola is a member city of the League of California Cities. This year, in 2023, no policy resolutions were received by the league for consideration at the general assembly. However, petition resolutions can still be heard at that time and voted on. And a voting delegate must be appointed by the city council and submitted to the league by August 28th for um, to be able to join General Assembly and vote. So as I said, voting delegates are appointed by the city council of each member city. Each city has one voting delegate and can appoint up to two alternates for the delegate. Voting delegates must attend the conference but are not required to attend for the entire duration of the conference. They can only attend Friday if they wish to do so. Um, and Friday is the day of Ge General Assembly. Currently, Council Members Brooks and Peterson are registered to attend the conference. So the recommended action this evening is to appoint one member as the primary voting delegate and appoint one to two members of the City Council as alternate delegates. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, I do. Um, I am vice president, I'm current city and vice president. I don't know that I could be both. Do you know the answer to that? So you're currently acting in a board role for the league. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, to be honest. I would have to check with their bylaws about that. I mean, council member Peterson's going to be there anyway, so. So we would just need a motion to appoint one of the members. I'll take it to public comment real quick. Sure. See if there's any anybody out there <laughs> or online. There are no hands raised currently. Thank you. All right. I'll move to make a motion that uh, we appoint Mr. Peterson and Vet as the backup, as Ms. Brooks. I'll second that. Great. First and a second. Maybe we have a roll call, please. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. Thank you. Okay. So we are going to segue back to the second part of item 9A, which would be approving a donor recognition policy for the wharf enhancements. If we could maybe take a restroom break okay, and while, do we're, while we're doing this. We'll come back in five minutes at 740. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Oh, Andrew. That was a three-minute break, I guess. Where did you go? We are back to reconsider the second part of item 9A. So, staff met with CWIP representatives out front here, and this is the language that we are now recommending for the donation naming policy. Uh, the language at this point is essentially clarified. It just says the city will make reasonable efforts to maintain the donor recognition for 20 years. Keeping it simple, we're not talking about the destruction of the wharf in the intervening times. The agreement was that if the wharf was no longer there in 10 years, then obviously you couldn't make reasonable, no longer reasonable to maintain the donor recognition. So this is the proposed language. Uh, I'm available for questions. Council questions? Any public comment? Anybody online? There are no speakers with their hands raised, Mayor. Great. We'll come back to Council for deliberation. I'd like to make a motion to approve a, the donor recognition policy for wharf enhancements with edits as seen here. Is that good? Great. I'll second that motion. Great. A first and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Clark. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. And Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Great. That passes unanimously. Great work, everybody. I'm really excited for all the fun stuff that's coming our way. And item 10, adjournment. Everybody be kind to one another and enjoy the rest of this lovely evening.